So rotisserie chicken. Yes. We've got the rotisserie on, on the charcoal. You can tell that the uh, rotisserie is on because you've got this black band which is part of the uh, product. And we've got the spit and the, and the forks here. Uh, we're going to do two chickens. Um, and we've got some spices. We're going to make up a simple spice rub for this. And you were saying that actually, while I'm getting on with this, you were just saying that um, you encourage your staff. Yeah, when, when, when customers come in and they want to get into barbecuing for the first time, one of the dishes we tell them to try first is a simple roast chicken. Um, most people know how to cook it, but try it on a barbecue because they'll then see the difference. They know they do uh, Sunday roasts regularly, so they know what the, it tastes like out of their oven. It's try really it on a barbecue and then they'll see the difference. And yeah. most people, will come back to us and say, I did the roast chicken as you suggested, I'm never doing it in the oven again. Yeah. Total difference. Yeah. Um, just while I, before I mix these all together, I just got some dry spice on here, just making up a dry rub and then we're gonna add some oil to help it all stick to the chickens. Got some ground coriander, ground cumin, some paprika, oregano, fennel, and um, soft brown sugar, salt, and we'll add some pepper. And I've just put enough to kind of coat the two chickens as much as I think each will need so we just put that on mix that all together and then if you want to add some oil to that we'll make up a little paste the oil just helps everything stick to the chicken and then the sugar in there is going to help to provide a little crust let's put some more on there there we go the sugar will provide a crust as the uh, as the chickens heat up it will um right so that's looking about fine so we'll take half of that We'll put that on this one. If I can get a little bit more oil over here as well. I'll go behind you. Yeah, so just drizzle that on. And this there is just go. gonna help the oil, the, uh, the skin to crisp up as well. So we'll just work this around. Make sure we get into those wings and all the way around the back of those legs. Uh, we're just gonna put the truss back on this is going to help the chicken just to stay nice and compact while it's on the barbecue. You wouldn't think I'd done that before, would you? The way that I just struggled with that. So we'll have a look at this one as well. Um, so do you want to talk through how we've set up the, the barbecue while I just finish okay, these off? So the charcoal in the barbecue, I don't know if you want to come in there. Um, we've got it set for indirect cooking. We've set the rotisserie, so the rotisserie is going to go across the middle of both these. Uh, the charcoal sat there, we've got it nice and it's at a steady temperature of 200 degrees centigrade. 180 to 200, it's a good steady temperature for, yeah. for rotisserie, isn't it, or for roasting in general. So, while you've got the, while you're at the barbecue, do you want to just take that tray? Yep. And um, it's always a good idea to pop a tray. Pop a tray in between the coals like so. Yeah, in between the coals underneath, just so that any juices that drip down while the, while the meats are roasting can just, um, they can be captured and you can add those to your gravy. So the spike end is going to go into the motor on the, uh, on the side of the rotisserie unit. So we just thread that through the chickens all the way through like so. And then this is done up. So we just undo this thumb screw. There we go, that goes in there. And then just before we get these completely set, We'll take this over to the barbecue. I'll leave the screws slightly loose for now, just so that we can adjust it if it's not quite central. So spike end through the hole in the back of the rotisserie, straight into the motor unit, just line that up. Make sure that that's sitting nice and evenly. Squish our two, not squish, but just make sure that they're nice and snugly together so that they help each other go around. While you've got chicken free hands, if you turn that motor on, we'll put the lid on. See that's rotating around the juices within the chicken. Well, you don't need a rotisserie to roast on your barbecue, but the advantage of a rotisserie is that all those juices just self bake don't they? Yes. they? Whether it's lamb, beef, chicken, pork, venison, whatever it is, they're just going to help all those juices roll around inside that chicken, stay nice and juicy. How long do you normally cook yours for? Hour and 15 minutes normally. Yeah, I'd go with that. Yeah. It cooks a little bit quicker just because when you put food onto a tray in the oven, after about half an hour, if you lift that chicken up, the underside is going to be raw. So by the fact that we haven't got the chickens on a tray, there's air all the way around that food, it's going to cook quicker. So if your normal guide for a chicken is say 20 minutes a pound plus 20 minutes, I would go with that 20 minutes a pound. We've got a digital temperature probe that we're going to use to just make sure that it's safely cooked. Yep. Um, and then that extra 20 minutes is just, just to give us a bit of leeway if we need it, but we may not need it because normally on a barbecue, roasts do cook quicker 
Um, and also they're juicier because your barbecue sits outside, draws in dampness from the air. It's generally damper outside the home than it is inside the kitchen. So your barbecue draws in that damp air and that's the main reason or one of the main reasons why your food, when you roast it and cook it on the barbecue, it's gonna be so much more juicy than it would be if it was in the kitchen. So we'll come back, they're one and a half kilo chickens. So we'll come back in about an hour, hour and uh, 10 minutes and we'll have check a check. Them. And uh, you can always pop the lid down and let them carry on cooking, but we'll just give them a check and we'll uh, see how they're getting on then. Okay, so we've given the chickens a good hour and a half. Yep. Should we check the temperature on them? Absolutely. All right, if I lift the lid, there's a the probe. There we go, thank you. So we'll just clean the probe. Turn oh. the power off. So if we check this one here, actually we're just going to check all of them anyway. Make sure the probe's on, helps generally. So the temperature we're looking for here is 75. That is just bang on the nose, 75.1. Check the breasts, check the legs as well. So 77 for that one. Let's just check that one as well, 76. And we'll check the breasts back here as well, 75.1, good to go. So we'll get those off, we'll let them have a rest. Temperature probe, really, really simple but Essential. effective bit of kit. Um, people talk about not cooking chicken from raw on their barbecue and it's, it's for no good reason. Um, we've cooked these from raw. Yep. Let's just address this right now. We've cooked these from raw. It's just a case of controlling the heat, having an indirect heat setup on your barbecue, cooking with the lid down and um, trapping that heat in there. So they look absolutely, I'd be, any, I'd be happy any day of the week Smell to serve again. those Smell up as well. Fantastic. So if we just undo that screw on there and we can slide that off. Oh, we'll pick that up in a moment. We'll just take that there. Haha. <laughs> Little rubber band. There we go. And then if you foil that, absolutely. So we're going to let these rest. Uh, we're just going to pop these in here. If it's a cool day outside, so not today, Scorchio here, but if it was a cool day, you'd cover those in foil, take them in the house, and just let them rest for a good 15, 20 minutes before you carve them. So we'll come back in 15, 20 minutes and we'll carve these. We'll show you a really simple way of carving them. Um, and then we'll have a taste. So okay. we're, we're giving these 15 minutes resting time. So let's have one of those onto here. Look at that. Can you imagine that, just putting that on the table with some nice veggies around that it? Look lovely. That'd just be. Simplest way to carve. There's a breastbone that runs right down the center of the crown. If you just take your knife and run ever so slightly to either side of it, you'll go down to the carcass underneath. And then down at the bottom here, there's the wishbone in a Y shape. If you just allow your knife to go outwards towards the wing, and then what we're gonna do is just cut through the legs and the breast, just, just where those join. And then we simply start to use the tip of the knife, just hold the breast away from the carcass and just use the tip of the knife to separate that meat off all the way down. We're gonna take the entire breast off, the wasp there, until you get down to the wing and then you just push straight through the wing joint and you've got an entire breast piece off there. Turn this around, do exactly the same on the, other, on the opposite side. And if you believe that food cools, no, that's still incredible. when it's had time to rest, then um, trust me it doesn't because this is quite toasty. So we'll just carry on carving this down here get all the way down to the bottom and again just slice through where the wing is so we've now got two entire breasts which we'll carve in a moment legs just slice down between the breast and the leg if we can there we go and then just simply pop the hip sockets and then just slice through that skin underneath Nice crispy skin, nice flavorful skin. Oh, left a little bit behind there. You do a lot of beer can chickens, don't you, as yeah, well? Yeah, We'll put this to one side for later. Because you could use that for you a stock. You could use that stock. for stock. Okay. And then just with your legs, there's um, where the knee is on between the thigh, between the thigh and the drumstick. Once it's cooked, if you just take that, um, take your knife and you can actually just press straight through so we'll take that out as well, just pop that to one side. And then the breast meat. 
The one thing when you're cooking a chicken on a barbecue that will surprise most people that have never ever cooked a whole chicken on a barbecue is just how much juicier the chicken is compared to when you cook it in your kitchen oven. Absolutely, absolutely. So if I just point those up there, I think we might be able to get a close up on that, um, on that cross section of the chicken breast there. But that is just a very juicy bit of chicken. Um, we should actually have a taste, shouldn't we? Should really. I think that's only fair. So if I move that to one side, and then if we just... There you go, choose your piece. Take that piece there. Benefits of roasting outside. You get the juiciness, you get the moistness from the, from the air. Um, so we had some cumin, some coriander, some fennel seeds, a little bit of oregano and paprika, sugar, salt, pepper. How is it? Really juicy, how it should be. Mm. That is so good. The wings will be nice and crispy. Oh, I just got a fennel seed. Amazing. Love it. Oh, um, the temperature probe. Make sure that your food's cooked, yep. but also make sure that it's not overcooked. Once it's, at, once it's at 75, it comes off. You should also remember to check three or four places on yeah. the chicken. Check all four points on the chicken. Make sure that both legs, both breasts are cooked as well to 75 degrees or higher. And as soon as it's over 75, it comes off the barbecue. So let it rest, carve it up, serve it with some nice roasties. Best way to cook a roast chicken on your barbecue. Um, more tips? For more hints and tips uh, on barbecue and food, uh, visit the barbecue shop here at Hayes Garden World or our website, hayesgardenworld.co.uk and we'll be more than happy to teach you how to cook these dishes yourself. <laughs>